We're beginning a new idea here with inverse functions. Before we do, let's kind of refresh your memory on what a function is. So remember, what we said a function is, is it's a machine. That you put something into the machine, you only get one thing out. So in terms of x, you put in a particular value of x, you only get one value of y out. You don't get two at the same time. It would be a very strange machine that you put something into it and it suddenly made two things at the same time. So if we have this, it's true, that if we only make one thing outside of the machine, then we have a function. And we stop just saying y and we replace it with that special notation that says, hey, this is that special machine that creates only one thing at a time. Now, an inverse function is going to be exactly what it sounds like. It's going the other way around. So an inverse function is one in which you go backwards and you get back to where you started. So you're going in the actual opposite direction, essentially like someone flipped a switch to turn the machine on in reverse. Okay, now that's what the idea is, is it's a reverse machine. And so we are literally going to um, end up right back where we started. Now, a way to check is to put them inside of each other. So we want to do a composite. So I want to see that these two things are inverses. In other words, if I started with this machine and I make this, if I take what I made and now put it into this machine, do I get back right where I started? And the way to check that would be to use composites. Do you remember how we would do this with where we might, it's the same thing, maybe we saw this notation that says we are going to put G inside of the F machine and see what happens. Well, look what would happen here. If this is my assembly line and I went forward, if this one goes backwards, shouldn't I return right to the X that I started with? So here's what I mean. We're going to put, it doesn't actually matter which order you go in, but I'm going to put the f of x machine inside the inverse machine as a composite. And so remember what that means. I'm going to put this everywhere there was an x in the other machine. So let's do that. So I'm putting the f of x machine in, into, in the place of the x in the other. So I've replaced x with everything from the first machine. Now, this is an inverse here, so I have so this is like keep change flip, or you could think of this going to turn this upside down, same thing. So this is like one being divided by a fraction. It's going to keep change flip, it's going to turn it upside down. So I get x plus one minus one. Well, if I tidy that up, I get x. So what this means is that if I put these two machines in an assembly line, they undo each other. It's like I went forward, I went back, and I get right back to X, which is what we started with when you, when you do the assembly line. So the machine goes forward, the machine goes back, it gets right back to X. And this will always be true if they're inverses. Now they went the other direction. I'm pretty confident I, I, that it doesn't matter. I, I'm sure this is true. You don't. It will be true either direction. You don't have to check both. But so they're doing the same thing the other way. Now they're putting the inverse machine we're putting this one into the other one, wherever there was an x. So they're subbing it in, just like we did before. Now you notice what will happen. You tidy these up. The, the ones will go. Then I have 1 over 1 over x, which we already saw will flip upside down. I get right back to x. So if you can put the two functions as composites inside of each other and you get back to x, they're inverses. OK. So it doesn't matter which way you go. I'm going to put this one into here. So I'm doing, and I'm going to get, so I'm subbing all of that in for the x. Okay, tidy this up. The fives will cancel. So I put it in parentheses to show I was subbing, but I don't need the parentheses anymore since there's no multiplication. So the fives would cancel. I'm going to get 3x over 3, and I get x. So these are inverses. Now let's check it the other way. You're going to see we're going to get the same thing. So I'm putting f of x in here. So the threes will cancel. So I have x plus 5 minus 5 now, 
and that's x. Okay, now how do we actually find an inverse? Suppose we had this function here, and I want to discover what the value of the inverse would be. There's a clever little trick where we're going to, well, that's a little complicated. Let me show you here. I'm going to replace the x's and the y's. Do you see what I've done? This is really y. Don't forget, that's really just y. I've replaced the x's and the y's. Just change the names of the variables. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to solve for y. So if I were trying to get this alone, remember you'd follow all the normal rules. I'd, I'd, the 1 is going to leave, then we're going to divide by 5. So do you see I'd have x minus 1. Now, to get the y to the third alone, that's the problem area, so that's what I'm going to try to get alone. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. Okay, now how would I get rid of a cube? I'd have to cube root both sides. And I've got it. Now, when I solve this, when I flip it, I'm essentially flipping the machine around, and I'm solving the other way around. Well, this is going to create the inverse. And once I've done here, and I've got y by itself, and we're going to remember this is a function, and now it's also an inverse function, so we're going to give it this inverse function name to say this is a reverse machine. And there is my inverse. I've literally turned around the input and the output of the machine, solved it the other way around, so I basically am turning the machine around. Now I'm assuming that this is going to be in an, another, we have several videos on this section, at least two I think, but I'll mention this here in case we don't see it again. So one of the interesting things about when you graph an inverse is because you're replacing the y and the x, you're ex essentially flipping it over the line y equals x. Because you're replacing y's with x's and x with x's with y's, it's going to flip it over this line right here. So over the identity function. So notice like if you folded it over this line, we now have the inverse as if it were folded over. Okay, they'd like us to find the inverse. Um, there haven't been many examples. This book doesn't have a ton, but pause it if you want to try it on your own. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to replace x. Remember, this is y, so I'm replacing x's and y's. Now, I'm going to get y by itself. Now, it's buried here in this cube. And there's nothing else I can move around, so I'm instantly going to need to cube, or it's in this cube root, I should say. So I'm going to instantly need to cube both sides. So if I cube this side, I get x to the third. And if I cube this side, they're opposites. I'll only be left with y plus 4. Now I'm going to subtract, subtract 4, and I get this. OK, now this is the reverse machine. So let's give it the reverse machine notation. And I got it. All right, that's an intro. Again, um, it's a good book. I appreciate it being free especially, but it doesn't always have a ton of examples. So um, I can supplement this with some other uh, videos of work, some work problems if I need to.